Hey guys, this is Mr. Roxy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. It is Friday. It is March the 11th. It's about uh, 5.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The markets are closed for another week of uh, Oxy Fun. And what we are going to uh, discuss in this particular video is a little bit of history. And then we're going to look at some of these crazy, crazy volumes that have been trading um, on this issue, Occidental Petroleum, during the past week. Um, volumes, uh, I'm going to do my best to explain to you uh, why or to show you where these volumes come from. But volumes that uh, typically average around 20 million shares traded per day have suddenly become, you know, for the past 10 days, the average is 79 million shares traded. So uh, huge. So what we're going to do first is uh, let's take a, a little trip down memory lane. So, uh, you know, for those of you who don't know, I'm uh, a historian. Nah. No, I'm not, I'm just kidding. But anyway, let's take a look sort of at a little bit of history uh, as it relates to um, Warren Buffett here. Is Buffett sentimental? The Oracle of Omaha purchased his first stock at the age of 11. Who of you purchased your first stocks at the age of 11? He bought six shares, three for himself, three for his sister, of Cities Service Company for $38 per share. The company's stock soon fell to $27, but went back up to $40. The Buffett sold, but it was too soon because shares went up shortly after to more than $200 per share. City Services, Cities Service started in Oklahoma in 1910 as a public utility company and segued into oil and gas through purchases. And in 1940, the United States government, who never interferes in uh, business at all, told the company to make a choice between being a utility or oil and gas, the latter of which won out. 1982, Cities Services became a subsidiary of Occidental Petroleum Company. Company Berkshire Hathaway recently purchased a sizable interest in on the opposite side of investor Carl Icahn, whose Icahn Enterprises sold his interest. So uh, maybe this is lesson number one, because there is always someone on the other side of every trade. If you are buying, that means someone else sold. And if you are selling, someone else will buy, which means one of you is going to be right. The other one's going to be wrong, but it depends on uh, the objective and the uh, timeline and all that kind of good stuff. So um, it isn't really a right or wrong. You need to do what's right for you at the time you make the decision to act. Who knows Buffett's reasons for the Occidental purchase? Good investment or sentimental reasons or both? Let's take a look at ICANN versus Buffett, right? This was last week's news, but uh, it's worth a revisit. Uh, two sides of an Occidental Petroleum trade. There's someone on the other side of every trade, right? That was point number one. It's not too often that you get two titans of the investment world. In this case, Warren Buffett and Carl Icahn on opposite sides of the trade. It occurred for the second time since 2016. I'm not going to go into detail here, but on May the 16th, 2016, Berkshire Hathaway took a roughly $1 billion stake in the shares of Apple. Buffett was attempting to buy the dip. ICANN Enterprises announced that it had removed the issue from its portfolio at that same time. So this is an interesting one, right? So Buffett, in this particular instance, talking about Apple, was trying to buy the dip, whilst ICANN was actually removing the issue or the issuer's stock from its portfolio. And then on March the 4th, this was last Friday, this is old news by now, right? Buffett took a sizable new position in the oil and gas giant Occidental Petroleum. And on Monday, actually it was on Sunday, the announcement, but on Monday, from an execution date point of view, longtime activist investor Carl Icahn revealed to the Occidental board that he has sold his remaining stake in the company. There's a little bit of news here about Anadarko. I'm not gonna go into that. Let's uh, jump to the next paragraph here. What's different? Icahn's exit of Occidental was selling into strength into a rising market. By the way, ICANN made about $1 billion or more profit, and he still owns 18 million warrants, 18 or thereabouts. He sold into a, a rising market as opposed to selling into weakness, which is what happened with Apple. In the case of Buffett, who usually accumulates into weakness, his purchase was in a rapidly rising issue. This is Occidental. That is at a 34 month high with oil at a 13 year high. How about Buffett versus ICANN over the last five years? 
at this time, it's impossible to determine who made the better move in terms of oxygen or petroleum, but it's very easy to determine whose investment style has prospered since the end of 2016. While Buffett's Class B shares have appreciated 130% from $140 to $323, ICANN Enterprises is slightly in the red, $54 down to $53. I am long ICANN Enterprises, so I don't like it when my uh, stocks are static. I've been collecting dividends, and those dividends have been good because they're about 14 15% over that period of time. But here is lesson number two, perhaps, or point number two. And this is just mathematical. If you can grow your portfolio at a rate uh, or a, a rate of return of approximately 15% per year, you can double your investment every five years. That's just math. So if you can achieve 15% per year compounded, then you will grow by 100% or more um, every five years. So when we look at, uh, we look back at Berkshire Hathaway Class B shares appreciated 130% from 2016 to now, it's about five years. Um, more than 100%, that means he's compounded his growth by more than 15% per year. 15% for what it's worth is my investment target on an ongoing basis. All right, let's jump into the current status. We take a quick look here at Occidental Petroleum. Uh, it closed today at about $57. That's the worst line I've ever drawn, so let's try again. That was the stock price at the end of the day today. We can see the market cap is at about 54 billion dollars it's jumped quite nicely the years the volume i was talking about earlier right 72 million 72.4 million shares average volume over the last 10 days shares outstanding 934 million keep uh, track of that one for just a second for me remember this common stock outstanding for occidental 934 million pe ratio jumping up now to 28 because of the price uh, appreciation here on occidental petroleum and um, dividends, nothing much to speak of here. And then, of course, you can see the institutional uh, ownership has now jumped as well uh, into the 70s. Uh, you'd be nuts to short Occidental, even at the current price of the short interest, uh, less than four, kind of makes sense. What happened today? There was an SEC filing by Occidental, document details, an SC13G filing. SEC filing 13G, let's take a look at what's going on here. But before we do look at the filing, let's just look at the largest quarterly institutional transactions since last quarter, right? So uh, 61 million shares added by Berkshire Hathaway, 27 million shares sold by ICANN during that same period of time. So we know about these, right? So where did the volume come from, the additional volume? Because this is not the 79 million that we're talking about. This is basically... Uh, as of the last quarter in terms of institutional investors and their trades that they made. So uh, if we look at the actual top 10 owners of Occidental Petroleum, then we can see this uh, very familiar name down here, BlackRock Fund Advisors, with almost 5% of the holdings, right? They just happen to be in fifth position, Dodge and Cox, Vanguard, Berkshire Hathaway, now jump to almost 10%. SSGA Funds Management and BlackRock. BlackRock almost at 5%. And look at the ownership, shares owned, 44.7 million shares, so nearly 45 million shares, okay? So a couple of things I asked you to keep track of and remember, 934 million outstanding shares, and now I'm talking about BlackRock with share ownership of 4.79, approximately 44 and a half million shares that BlackRock owns in Occidental Petroleum. So what does this Schedule 13G that was filed today look like? Obviously, the issue is petro uh, Occidental Petroleum, and it's a Rule 13D filing, which is a material change in uh, institutional ownership. We scroll down a little bit more. I'm not going to go too far, but I do want to share the information with you. The reporting person is BlackRock Inc. Who is BlackRock Inc.? We're going to look at that one in just a second as we go through this filing. Percentage of class represented. In row number nine, 6.4%. Remember, I just said four point something. In terms of ownership, there's BlackRock in New York. Who is BlackRock, Inc.? BlackRock is the parent holding company or control person in accordance with Rule 13D. In other words, the person responsible for this particular filing. How much do they own? 59.5, almost 59.6 million shares. 
from 44 to 59.6 million shares, which now represents 6.4% of Occidental. So instead of holding 4.7, they now own 6.4. And instead of owning 44.7 million shares, BlackRock now owns 59.5 million shares. Who does BlackRock Inc. represent? By the way, that was the filing today. And here you can see all the different legal entities that uh, is uh, listed under this filing with BlackRock Fund Advisors listed as the owner. So one of the owners, BlackRock Fund Advisors. Now you can kind of get where I'm going here. So we wanted to look at the institutional investors. Who are they? And uh, where did all this volume come from? So we know that I can uh, sold out and we know that Buffett had been buying and Buffett bought more than two times the amount of shares that um, ICANN had sold or offered for sale on Monday, which was his trade execution date. And where did the rest of the volume come from? Well, it came from one of the other titans, BlackRock. What is interesting about BlackRock, um, maybe it's a philosophical discussion, but um, Larry Fink from BlackRock is on TV all the time talking about, we gotta go green. We have to invest in renewable energy. We have to invest in green energy. We have to wean ourselves off fossil fuels. Yet BlackRock is increasing their stake in Occidental Petroleum. And you know what? Maybe for us as Occ Occidental Petroleum investors, that ain't a bad thing. So uh, guys, that's the news. What are you doing? Are you holding? Are you buying? Are you selling? Taking some profit? Let me know in the comments. It's always interesting to know where your head's at and what it is that you're doing. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.